live, but uh, you might be joining me later on, which is cool. Um, I just thought I might as well share with you guys what I was doing painting my scenery, so sort of taking it from uh, this undercoated state, um, so something more like a finished snowy scene scenery. Uh, I'll see if I can do all that in one city, should be okay, should be easy enough to do. Um, what I decided to do was create um, a situation where I use uh, an awful lot of reference material. Let me see if I can change what you can see. I don't know how to easily do that, but I've got a reference photograph. I'll, I'll, when I re-upload this and show it as a as an edited video, I'll put the reference picture up, and you can see. But it's basically a reference picture of a snowy castle in Italy, which uh, is really useful. I think if you can use reference, that's always a good idea um, in whatever it is that you're painting. Um, if you haven't got reference, you end up just making stuff up, and making stuff up doesn't always work very well. So the first thing to do, I've got a sort of a, a greeny grey undercoat on here, which uh, I think it's German field grey, which is good because it looks like a, uh, a sort of generic, I guess it's used, it was used originally for camouflage, so that means that it fades pretty well, but it's not exactly grey, it's not exactly green, it's a bit of everything. Um, but what I want to do is push it a little bit greyer uh, and leave some of the green in the details um, so it looks sort of mossy or it looks something like that. Now we're painting something which is um, 3D printed uh, and 3D printed stuff very often has uh, lines, horizontal lines depending on how it was oriented when it was printed but horizontal lines running around the print uh, and a lot of painting techniques do well, they kind of accentuate that, which is a bit of a problem. But I'll, I'm going to go through some bits and we'll see if we can resolve that a little bit as we go. So, basically, I want it to look grey now with some green showing through in the details. That's the plan. Uh, it's already quite different than it was. Um, you can see there that it's picking up on the bits of the print that are not as smooth as it would be. If it was like a if this was something that was came out of a box that had been injection molded, there wouldn't be these lines. Because it's been created by extruding plastic over a long period of time, we get these uh, physical sort of evidence of that. It's fine. It won't matter. For something that's going to be tabletop scenery, it won't matter. If you were doing something that was really it was important that it looked exactly right then you might feel a little differently about it. But for a job like this, where it's going to be on a tabletop, uh, you're going to be mostly seeing it from uh, a little distance away. Uh, and also, really, it's not the focus of your attention. The miniatures are going to be the focus of your attention. So you're going to be able to get away with quite a lot here in terms of it looking just OK and not uh, absolutely amazeballs. So it's an illusion, basically. What we're trying to create here is an illusion. Um, something that's more... actually than the sum of its parts. Uh, you can see there it's leaving some of the green in the detail. Uh, it's unusual for bits of rock and whatnot to all be one colour. And in the real world, well, they just aren't. If you look around yourself at walls and things that you might see all the time without really noticing. If you really look at them you'll see that there's quite a variety of colours all the way through. I'm nearly running out of paint now. <laughs> I'm going to have to get some more. I was hoping I'd get away with it. Never mind. Um, if you don't know about dry brushing Dry brushing is basically a technique where we work the paint into the bristles of the brush um, and then use the physical shape of the model, or in this case scenery, miniature, 
to pull the paint off the brush. We're not covering the surface that we're painting. Like if you were painting something and you wanted to change the colour of this from this grey green to red, you'd need much thicker, you'd need more paint to make a, a full coverage. But what we, we don't want full coverage, we want to leave bits showing through. And it does loads of things for us. It, it shows us where the edges are when we're looking at it. Because um, it'll, whoops, I think I banged the camera, because it'll stick to those edges better than the flat sections. It works best on surfaces with some detail like this. Uh, so it'll show us where the edges are and, and one of the things that you want to try and do with miniature stuff that you want to look big in the real world, this of course is not, what's this, I don't want to be doing a spinal tap on you, this is three inches tall, um, but in the real world, the miniature real world, it's quite a lot bigger, it's probably 18 feet tall. Uh, so we have to create volume, uh, by that I mean it needs to feel heavier, bigger, somehow. And the only real way to do that with a miniature is to increase things like the difference in light and shadow, and all that kind of stuff. And we're going to do that, this dry brushing will help with that, because it's going to give some extra shadow where this actual piece of plastic doesn't really generate as much shadow, so we're creating an illusion of shadow. So there's that. I'm going to see if I can find one of the ones that I've got undercoated but not painted, and then you can we can use it as a comparison as we go. There we go. So you can see we're already getting quite a lot greyer, and hopefully you can see that we've left some of the greeny grey in the details. And that's step one done. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Okay, next step. Uh, I'm going to go paler again. Um... You can use any, honestly, it doesn't really matter what colour paint you use. Uh, I'm using, these are Vallejo paints, but uh, I mean, I've actually got um, workshop paints here as well. It's just, these are just greys that I've got handy. So I'm not going to clean the brush, I'm just going straight in with this paler grey. And now I'm sort of being a bit, little bit more careful, because I don't want it to catch as quite as much as that first layer did. Um, Otherwise, that first layer would have been a little bit pointless. So we just want to sort of catch the very edges now. Um, and the detail. And what we're going to try and do is, if we try and keep it going from this direction, so top down rather than left to right, uh, that's going to... It'll land where light would land. And so it will basically fool your eye that there is more light landing than there is. And that's why it ends up looking bigger uh, than it really is. Also, I suppose, in the real world, a lot of what you're looking at here would have staining, um, water stains, all sorts of stuff. Uh, and so we're sort of creating an illusion of all of that at the same time. We're doing lots and lots of jobs at once. And, and you might not realise it, uh, but you are an expert on how walls look. You see them often. You look around, you, know, you, you walk past walls all the time, you would know if the wall looked wrong. You might not know why it looked wrong, but your subconscious will be like, yeah, there's something not right about this. It doesn't look, it doesn't look what I expect a wall to look like. Uh, which is great if you can harness that and bring that into your toolbox fact that you know what a wall looks like so my advice would be look at everything like really look at stuff when you're out and about because you'll start to understand what it is that you're trying to recreate when you're making your scenery and you're making your bases and your miniatures but you've got to you've got to look around the answers are all out there and you know reference is good real life reference is good take photographs of stuff if you see a wall that looks absolutely amazing <laughs> or just interesting take a photograph and then have a look at it and work out why, like what's going on, what actual colours are on that wall, what's really happening. And all that information gets filed away and added to your capabilities. And it'll all 
help to make your minis better. So you can see there, that's that's quite a lot paler than that first highlight. But I'm trying to just sort of catch the edges. And this is what I mean about the 3D print. Because it's a 3D print and you've got that horizontal line, this paint is going to stick to those horizontal lines. And where we, we want it to accentuate the corners and edges, ugh, it's going to accentuate the fact that it's got these 3D print lines too. So we, we have to sort of take that into account. And we're sort of working at cross purposes to ourselves a little bit here. So just, you know, trying to avoid that. Oops, that was way too much. Just wipe it straight off. Like I said, it doesn't really matter whether you get it exactly perfect. Walls are different shapes, colours. There's loads of stuff going on in a real wall. Colours that you wouldn't expect to see. That if you start to paint them, you'd think that oh, that just looks crazy. It doesn't look believable or realistic. But the reality is the world out there, uh, there's a lot more variety than you probably think. Because this, in, a, in the real world, this wall is not a static piece of stuff. Uh, it's made of stone, which of course is inert. Well, it's not actually inert, I guess, is it? If you think about it, you've got a situation where water is working on it and possibly dissolving salts or minerals or whatever is happening in the rock. Uh, if it's very old rock, it's been worn by wind. It's not completely inert. But, relatively speaking, compared to my life and your lifespan, I guess rock is fairly inert. Uh, but you've got a situation where, in the real world, other things are working on this material. Uh, plants would grow up it. Now, some of those plants in a warm environment, some of those plants are going to be fairly big. Uh, and if you don't add that to what it is that you're doing, <coughs> excuse me, then your scenery is going to look strange and disconnected uh, from the, the world. It will look like a piece of plastic sat on the table. Um, and that's not going to do it. That won't be what you want. Um, so you know you, you might add oops, you might add a little bit of moss or algae that grows up. And if you think about it, if you look, go and look at a wall next time you're out, go look at a wall. The first couple of feet of the wall are very green often because they are wet more often because of what rain splashes up. And especially here in Northern England, uh, you'll see that a lot. So, you know, adding that stuff on works. But initially, what we're going to do, we're going to do it as if we were nature. So we're starting with making the rock look like rock. And then we're going to add weathering. And then we're going to add the sort of temporary effects. The things that would be there for a short amount of time and then disappear. Like snow um, or seasonal growth. Okay, so that's, now, there you go. That's the difference. How long have we been doing this now? Well, I don't know. 13 minutes since I started recording. Okay. And we, you know, you could put that on the table now and it looks more painted than that does. But we're going to take it even further. So, what we're going to use is uh, these. Um, we're going to use the buff pencil, which is a sort of. Um, what's a buff color? But it's slightly warmer. I don't know if you can see. Um, I don't think I need to sharpen it, but I do need a touch of water uh, because I'm going to wet the pencil. So if I wet this pencil, and then I'm looking at this and thinking, where does the water flow? Uh, so water is going to sort of flow here, I think. So because I've wet it, can you see it's it's almost like pigment now in a stick. And I'm just going to take it in lines coming downwards like that. Because that's the direction that water would flow. Uh, again, there's a little bit more than I wanted there, so I've just lifted it off my finger. But I've, I've taken it in the direction that I think it would fall anyway. And all that does is increase the amount of sort of natural uh, impression that it's going to give. If I went the other way, it would it would not look like a falling water anymore. So where does water flow? So I, you can see there that I've, we've added a little bit of streaking down the side. Uh, I don't want to do too much of this. So I imagine water would fall here, it might fall here, and then it won't drop here, but it might drop here where the, the brick edge is. And then it's going to fall down the, the, the side of this brickwork. And it's been doing that for 50 years. 60 years and it slowly stained the wall there to look 
a different colour. And because we're adding these different colours in, it will make this um, brickwork seem a lot more alive, whereas at the moment it's all one colour. This will sort of add, I guess, just extra interest for your eye. Uh, I think there might be some water might collect here. So let's have some of that water collecting there. And then I guess it's going to run off down here. It'll dry a little bit less strong looking than that, but it, you can see already that it's sort of breaking up the, the monotony of the grey. At first, the, when you start doing something like this, at first you look at it and you think, oh my god, that just looks so strong. Because you, you've sort of, your eye is tuned into the, this grey, and then suddenly you've put this other colour on, and your brain's like, oh no, you've ruined it. Uh, you haven't ruined it. It's fine. Uh, a little bit more here. Again, we're just, we're literally just trying to make it look a little bit more organic and a little bit less like, um, like it's just somehow in this weird, sterile environment. Now, these lines, of course, are going uh, vertically. So, uh, in terms of what happens with the 3D print horizontal lines, they're going to help your eye see something different. Um, so that's quite quite a big streak there, and I guess because it's a big streak, it must have been coming from somewhere. We better have some staining here on the top, um, else that wouldn't look right. Your brain would know there's something wrong there. I'm just going to minimise it a little bit, but in the direction of the flow of water. That's that's the key, really. Is think about what you're trying to create. So if you're trying to create something that was created by the flow of water then you know follow the lines of gravity or like if you hit a piece like that follow that piece down and then you're not if that's what water does you're trying to recreate that effect and I probably need to sharpen this a touch I'm gonna just give it a little sharp just so that I've got a slightly better edge and a point. And I can get into the nooks and crannies a bit better. You don't have to wet these pencils, you can just use these pencils uh, dry and then either leave them dry or wet them with a very damp brush. When I say very damp, let me just rephrase that. Wet them with a brush that is damp enough to sort of activate the pigment. You don't want to be wet through. Um, it gives you a lot of control over where you're placing the pigment. Um, so for things like you know, streaks and whatnot, you could it's almost like, imagine like a normal uh, pencil crayon, you could just draw lines and then kind of soften them and blur them. Uh, so I think I'm gonna, just for funsies, I'm gonna add uh, a little bit in the detail there, as if it's collected and run down there, and then maybe I don't know, so it, it goes into the brickwork and disappears. Where else? Where else do we want some of this? Uh, bit on here. Um, so yeah, it basically, you do it in the order that it happened in nature. So the rock has been there a long time. This stuff has been here for quite a long time. These stains, these marks. Um, what is the next thing that's been there a while? I guess it's any kind of vegetation. Um, I might put some vegetation on top of it. It wouldn't be unusual. I've seen plants growing out of gutters. <laughs> so it wouldn't be completely beyond the bounds of possibility. I didn't quite get the detail there, so I'm just using the brush to poke it in there. Um, it wouldn't be beyond the, beyond the bounds of possibility that a, a you know, plant was growing there. So I might do that just to show you. Add a little bit more streaking. Hopefully you can see what I'm talking about. And then we'll get on this back side. Where do we think, where do we think? I'm gonna have a little bit that's collected here. Here. And then maybe it ran over the side here. And then just down the front and maybe collect it down here. Some of this is just sort of telling yourself a little story about what, what's what been happening to this place. If you sort of tell yourself a little story about what's been happening to the place, it makes it a lot easier to imagine it. 
Whereas if you just start making it up, I mean, you can just make it up. If you've got an amazing eye, you could just say to yourself, well, I think this looks good, but I, I don't know, I don't think my eye is as good as that. So I, um, I create a narrative in my head about this has been here for this long and then the rain and then this happened. And, and because I've done all that, I'm, my it, that informs where I'm going to put the different colours and the paints and whatnot. Uh, let's get a little bit here on the top. I'm going to wipe it off. This is kind of like a wash. If you think of it like I'm doing a wash, I'm just putting it on and then taking it off and leaving it in some of the detail. Because, of course, these uh, stains have come from somewhere. Uh, ha. Okay, let's have a quick comparison to the comparison one. Yeah, it's starting to look a little bit more organic now, a little bit more uh, interesting. I think what happens next is we get some form of vegetation. And I said I was going to put a, a plant or something up there, so that's what we're going to do. These are frozen tufts from Army Painter. Um, I don't think these have a, a sticky back. <laughs> that grey is going everywhere. So I probably need some super glue. So we're just going to get a little bit of super glue. I've got a failed 3D print here. This is an old pot of super glue, so normally you'd be doing all the lovely taking it out of there but uh, not this time don't like to waste this tiny last bit so that's what we're going to do uh, somewhere I've got my tweezers there we go these aren't the best tweezers for this job but they'll do and I'm just going to get a small tuft um, I think I'm going to cut it in half so that I can add two small tufts ok there we go and just get some super glue on the bottom. Where do plants grow on buildings? In the nooks and crannies. So there we go. We're just going to pop that in there. So here, this is the next stage. So these are the things that have been here less long than the water stains. Um, but not much. Oh, just feel a bit sticky. I don't know if I trust it, so I'm going to add some glue anyway so these have been here less long than the water stains because then maybe they grew last summer uh, is what I'm imagining uh, and this is the leftover plant sort of hanging on over winter or maybe I don't know whatever you think but they've not been here as long as the rest of the stones have they that's the, that is the key thing so it's very hard to do it the other way around if you do it this way around you're sort of building things up in the way that it happens in nature which makes things feel a lot more realistic um, I think that's okay yeah that's all right I quite like it actually right okay I was gonna, just debating whether I should put another one on but I'm not going um, I usually prefer to do things in threes three is a good number artistically speaking the tufts away. They're good these tufts, I like them and they do a lot of different ones so that's good. Okay so uh, in my mind in this place it has been snowy. So that's the most recent thing that's happened. Um, so we're going to add some snow to this. Now snow falls and um, again looking at my reference picture if you think about snow you get a situation where some snow will fall and then some snow melts. If it's old snow, some has melted, some has stayed uh, where it was. I'm just going to get rid of this bit of uh, pigment before I start applying snow. I don't want, <laughs> don't want yellow snow. Um, so yeah, some snow has fallen and then yeah, let's say it was a bit warmer the next day, it will have melted, but it won't all have melted. Some of it will have melted uh, in the uh, the surfaces that are being warmed by the sun, but the places that are in shadow probably are not melting. And if you think about, uh, I mean, I'm thinking about in the UK, uh, I can think about times when I've gone for a walk and uh, the snow, you can tell which side is north and which side is south because the north side of the wall is still got snow on one side of it and the south side is all melted. And in a way, that's what we're going to do. That's what I did here. I imagine that the, it snowed this way or the wind was blowing this way and it left some snow in the details. But so the first thing we're going to do is add older snow it's so a snow that has been around for a bit. Um, and here is my snow. I'm going to use this stuff. I absolutely love this stuff. I think it's really, really, really good. Um, 
I was doing it initially with my finger and this brush will do it. They're good these brushes. I was chatting with somebody in the shop yesterday. They were coming to pick up their order and uh, they're so cheap these brushes. Like they are super duper cheap. And this brush has given me, I mean look it's knackered now, but it's given me good service up to this point. I don't think I'm going to start putting snow on with it today. I think I'm still going to go, I'm going to go finger. But let me get some kitchen roll and then I can keep on top of that. Okay, so I've got some clean kitchen roll. And I'm just going to get some snow on my finger and then I am going to uh, basically simultaneously do the snow falling and the wind blowing it away. <laughs> so there we go. Now what I might do is use the brush to help me move some of this around. Uh, I'm going to try and get some wedged up there in that bit because snow gets caught in the details. And like I said, if this side is in shadow, if the sun's shining from, from this corner, then it's unlikely that all of this snow is going to melt. Um, so I'm going to wipe it from that side and hopefully that leaves snow uh, kind of hidden in the detail where it might be in the real world. But we'll, here we go, so we're wiping the excess off and we want to leave, I need to kind of get in there but it's alright, snow is, again there's no really correct way, so I mean snow the wind and all the rest of it can create some quite unusual shapes and all the rest of it. So that's quite bright. Hopefully that's... Uh, shall I just turn the exposure down a touch while we do the snow? Is that better? Maybe you can see that a bit better. Uh, let's just try and make it get a good focus. I've not done that for a bit. There we go. So we're sort of adding snow now into some of these details. And I am going to poke... Ooh, I am going to poke it around if I can get all this brush. A little bit, not too much. Uh, I think I've just super glued my fingers together. Um, yeah. Okay, a bit more snow. Got some there. Uh, we're coming in from this side and we're wiping off from the other side. It sort of happens just naturally, quite honestly. Um, the real job here is just looking at it and thinking, does that look right? Like, does that look, does my mind's eye say to me, yeah, that's what snow looks like. And it does, but I feel like there's not enough there. So I'm just going to, like if there's snow here, why isn't the snow in these details here? So we're going to add a bit, not too much, but a bit. And if we again, if we're thinking about, well, this is happening because the sun is melting it, then we kind of want to make sure that we've got, uh, it needs to be down here where the shadows are. I might actually switch to the brush for this because I need to be able to get, I need to get it into the nooks and crannies, but I don't want to be trying to cover my finger with snow. But we, yeah, I imagine snow would be down in the details there, where it's never really getting any sunshine to melt. Bit off. Okay. So it's a bit weird. You've got to think about the snow's falling, you know, from top to bottom. The sun's shining on it. You're trying to combine all those effects, really. Um, to get the final product, but most of it is just to think about what you're doing and does it look logical. I've got some other snow products and I might use one of them after this just to create um, you can sort of create more recent snowfall. <laughs> There's a lot of different snow products that you can get for modeling. Uh, I want some snow here on the top in the cracks where the sun never shines. Oh that sounds bad. <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, so, and I'm guessing, looking at it, and I don't know whether you can see what I can see, but I think there will be snow here as well, behind this bit. So, we're just going to wedge a bit of snow in there. 
So this isn't today's snow, this isn't um, even last night's snow, this is snow from a week or two ago and it's And the other thing, as I said, don't forget, you are looking at this with absolute critical eyes because you're the person doing it. But this will be on a table. It'll be four feet away from you. Um, it'll be amongst other bits of scenery, um, which will help the whole illusion. You won't be examining this particular piece of scenery with as much care and attention as you are right now. This is the most you'll ever look at it, probably. Um, so, you know, you can have... <laughs> it doesn't have to be perfect, not by a long stretch. Uh, because by the time you put it, you know, let me just move my... put the lid on this so it doesn't dry out. Um, if I can work out how to get a screw top lid on. <laughs> Come on, lid! You can do it! Oh my god, it's childproof or something. I can't manage it. I don't feel like I had this problem the other day. Right, anyway, that'll do. Um, yeah, so it's going to be amongst other bits of scenery. Um, you're going to have lots of it on the table. Um, that will help you to believe in it. And then, of course, it won't be the only piece. There's going to be bigger pieces, uh, more bits of scenery. And so the whole effect will work. You don't need to worry too much about each individual piece being some kind of, you know amazing competition winning piece of scenery it's you're looking for an overall effect here and we're done that piece is done i reckon um i could probably do that a touch quicker if i wasn't thinking about you know videoing and whatnot or trying to maintain talking rubbish for the whole time um but we've gone from that to that and i'll i'll put a photograph up as well and then you can have a look at that um, and then I think, you know, you have a table of that, uh, a little bit of other bits and pieces going on. Um, that's going to look pretty good. You know, what, what more could you want from a, a snowy bit of ruined scenery? All right, there you go. I'm all done. Um, I'll take some photographs. I'll get them put on for you. Um, and I'll edit this down and do a, a, a sort of an edited highlight. Uh, and that's it. All right. Good stuff. See you later, guys.